Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 160 new subscribers since the last time we filmed at Keto on the Couch. Yeah. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So this has been an interesting week. We spent the last few days doing a beef and butter fast. And I got to say, I had high hopes for this thing. Yep. And I have been like, wah, wah. Well, I mean, we, the, the results have been okay. But we were originally saying, like, we're going to eat any kind of beef. And it kind of just turned into just Hamburger. ground beef every single day. With the exception of the one day that I made you that ribeye that's, like, two pounds. From the Flintstones. Yeah, we went to, like, Whole Foods. And they had, like, pasture-raised ribeye on sale. So I got this, like, nice two-pound ribeye. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cooked it in the sous vide machine. And it was awesome. But... So that was the only day we did anything other than ground beef. Yeah, and here's the thing. I felt better when we did an egg fast. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, I wasn't looking at the ground beef or gra the beef and butter challenge to do anything. Just kind of, I know you wanted to just try something different. Everybody's talked about it, but I've discovered something. I love hamburger. Yes. I love ground beef. I do not like ground beef just when it comes to nothing really with it. Mm -hmm. it I'm not, I like the taste. But the texture, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy the texture this week. I just, with not a lot of carbs in our life this week, like basically almost no carbs except for whatever seasoned salt I would put on it to just flavor it a bit. I didn't even use ketchup. Right. But um, I thought, boy, I'm going to feel fantastic. And I was like, meh. Yeah. I didn't lose a bunch of weight, even water weight. I feel like kind of bloated. It's kind of weird. I think a lot of it is we weren't getting enough electrolytes in. Think so? Yeah. But yeah, for me, the only thing I took away from this whole thing was I'm not a fan of the texture of just plain ground beef unless I'm adding like, usually I like to do my ground beef and then I will fry up a couple of eggs mm -hmm. with a runny egg yolk and put it out over the top and the egg yolk, when I cut it, kind of mixes in with the ground beef. But we couldn't even do that. But we didn't do that because we weren't doing eggs. Or I'll take like an egg and drop it in there and kind of scramble it with the ground beef or we add cream cheese or something like that. Boy, that dishwasher is awfully loud. Why do we always turn the dishwasher on when we're about to film this? Because we always have a ton of dishes. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too bad on the audio. Sorry. Otherwise we're refilming this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I just kind of learned I don't like the texture of just plain ground beef unless it's made into a hamburger or something like that. I mean, I enjoy these challenges where we say to ourselves, like, this is just what we're going to eat this week is kind of to change it up because it keeps me focused on my goals, which is don't have a crazy day of eating a whole bunch of, right. like, erythritol laden things and carby foods and so it did that i mean it kept me on track i didn't like go off the wagon because right. i stuck to you know the calories and stuff i was excited that it was another week of me tracking my food yeah it's possible i guess this is for life now we're supposed to be tracking our food now i'm actually i'm done with like these like only eat this challenge for a while uh, with the exception of, I think at some point, Chris and I may be doing a keto chow challenge for like seven days, but we talked about doing, you can only have savory flavors, the four savory flavors. Okay. So, but other, but I actually enjoyed that. That's fine. But um, I'm done with this. Like, I'm not going to do one of these like eating only eggs or that kind of thing for a while, but I am kind of researching and planning on doing maybe a week of um, just intuitive eating. Oh. Where absolutely no tracking, like still staying keto, but I want to do like a week, at least for myself, you don't have to do it, but I want to do like seven days of intuitive eating, just eating like till I'm full, not tracking anything and seeing like, how does my weight fluctuate with that? Like, how do I do with that? Can I like visually look at something without weighing it and everything else and know the proper amount to eat? Okay. So normally we do challenges together. Uh-huh. This one, you're going it alone because I'm afraid if I intuitively eat, 
I could get into trouble. I think you would do well, especially if you would do it with intermittent fasting or even an OMAD. Because, like, I was actually just watching a video with Goody Beats. Maybe OMAD. Do you know, like, the average people, everybody talks about OMAD. He was talking about the positives and the negatives. And it's funny, I was actually planning a video like that, and now I can't even do it. <laughs> but he was talking about the positives and negatives of OMADs. And one of the things that is a positive and a negative is that the average person on OMAD doesn't eat more than 15 or 1600 calories in their sitting, which is right where you're supposed to be eating. Like yeah. You would be really pressed, unless you're like a big bodybuilder who's used to eating like three, 4,000 right. calorie meals, you'd be hard pressed to eat more than 15 or 1600 calories. So that's a positive of OMAD because if you're trying to lose weight, yeah, you will like, it's easy to calorie restrict because you're only eating the one meal. Mm -hmm. But it's also a negative, and that's why it's OMAD's not such a great thing like long term because your body's going to adjust to those calories, and now you're messing with your metabolism and everything else. And when you do eat, you expect a massive amount of food. Right. <laughs> well, I was looking at the whole idea of like you're not getting enough of your nutrients. Oh. Right. So, so before we do anything else, I'm going to put my drink down. We got a package. Waterloo. We got a package. We got a package. I went over to like the post office box or whatever you want to call this it. This is the mailbox. something that you purchased? I did not purchase this. This is a package from Kim. Oh who my sent gosh. Us this. Look, I got my mini knife. Who is Kim? Not quite sure. I'm so excited. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Are you fooling me? No. Are you ready? We got a we got like a present? We got a present. Oh! Close that up. Oh my gosh. Ready? Oh my goodness, there's a card. Oh, do you know who this Kim is? No. It's 10 Carb Kim. Oh, cool. 10 Carb Kim. Well, what does it say? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, it has dragonflies on it, <laughs> and I'm a huge butterfly fan. As you can see, I actually have a tattoo of a butterfly. Well, read it. It says, Dear Joe and Rachel, that's us. It says, thank you for creating Two Crazy Ketos. I enjoy your channel so much. Please know that the work you're putting into it is very much appreciated. Enclosed are a couple of t-shirts. Oh, oh wow. my gosh. I hope you get a chuckle from them. There's nothing racy or offensive. Well, that's good. <laughs> How sweet is that? Just good, clean fun. I saw a guy in Costco wearing one, and I said, that's Joe. Oh, wow. Aww. Thank you. So I went on a hunt and found it. I hope you guys like these. If not, please pass them along to the next folks. Oh, my goodness. There is absolutely no way we're not going to love these. Congratulations on the recent growth of the channel. Wishing you the best, Kim, 10 Carb Kim. P.S. Hi, Tabitha. Wow. Well, let's take oh a look at gosh. this. Oh, my gosh. Miss Kim. Oh, wait a second. I found something else. What'd you find? Oh, dang! There's dangs in here. Oh. That's for you. Oh my goodness, she wrapped up. This one's for me. How sweet is this? I'll let you open yours first. Oh my goodness. What does this say? Thermostat police, please stay away from me. Please step away from the dial. Oh that my is gosh. awesome. Yes. That is awesome. Wow. Well, thank you. That is you if I have, I mean, oh, I'm every dad. That. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It says avogato. That's awesome. Like the cats. And the cat says hola instead of meow. There's two more. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love this. Oh my How gracious. Miss Kim. Well, thank you. You shouldn't have done this. How exciting. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to wear these. It says, tell your dog I said hi. <laughs> Look, she came over. You got to stay over there. Hi. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Miss Kim Card. Okay. I actually love red shirt. Oh, wow. Wow. So it's a bacon shirt. Tap of the nail. Go lay down. Well, she says this is for me, I think. So it's a bacon shirt with a periodic table, which I actually have that blue one, but it's kind of like really ruined. It's so been killed. I really love this one. Oh, my goodness. Barium cobalt nitrogen bacon. Oh, Miss Kim, thank you so much. Well, thank I you can't believe so much, Kim. You did that. I cannot wait to wear them. We'll make sure that we wear them in a. a like the next video, I'm going to be wearing one. That's like so exciting. Thank you. And thank you to all you guys. We actually hit 
3,000 yes. subscribers this week. Hard to believe. I, I can't believe it. To God be the glory, obviously. But you guys have been incredible. Like, without you, we'd just be two crazy people sitting on the couch talking to one another. <laughs> So let's Thank talk a you. little bit about our week. So it's it's been a fast-paced week. Um, like football for me started last week. I had youth football on Saturday for the first week. And then like today's Friday. Tomorrow we have a field clinic. Anthony has youth football games in the morning and then a field clinic because the uh, Federation for High School Football has decided to implement a new rule, which is going to be a pain in the neck for us to officiate with. It's a 40-second clock. Okay. Which I know you don't know anything about this. I have this. no idea. You're like, it's supposed to speed wah, up the wah, game, wah. but it's going to be a lot for us to like learn how to officiate. And the season starts next week. No pressure. So, yeah. So, tomorrow will be interesting because Anthony's got games. He's got four games in the morning. Then he has to go over to do a high school game to be done at 5 o'clock to get back to the church by, like, we're supposed to be there at 5 o'clock. So, we're so. going to be driving. I'm going to be a mom taxiing all over the place. <laughs> So, yeah, so preparing for that, and it's been super hot this week. Caleb had his first, like, class today. Of school. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't officially start for another, like, week and a half, but it was, like, orientation, and he was just so excited. I love it. Oop, I can hear him blowing off our yard. Yeah, so, wow. I, I really hope all this doesn't come through on our microphones, but... Life. So, yeah, so that's pretty much what was going on, just a lot of work and busyness and stuff like that. Obviously, like, food was super easy for yeah. us anyway. We doing the beef and butter. But at the same point, like, I was, like, experimenting with recipes for different things. We did the pecan sandies. Did, you had to do a lot of just kind of, like, figuring that all these ingredients together tasted good and then just bringing the kids. Not tasting them, yeah. So we so made a bunch of keto chow recipes. I did, like, a... Chicken casserole one, which I'll leave link, link down below. The That's, kids love that one. We can't. You made two trays of it this week, and it's gone. Yeah, I never got to taste it. Um, then we did a. What else did we do? You we did, did a cookies. cookies, and I think the texture came out good. Yeah, and kids said they liked, they liked it. Them. So, but Passed I don't the know. Kid test. Then we did a cheesecake, which we're gonna share that recipe yeah so that recipe is also linked down below these were all for like the keto chow recipe challenge oh and you did chili and i did a chili now the chili one i did taste because we had started we'd actually done that before we started the beef and butter fast and we had one day where i didn't even eat until the very end of the day i only ate like 700 calories that day and i just ended up having some of that chili so technically it was kind of off the beef and butter but i mean it was only made out of beef anyway so how did it taste it tasted really good again we had it last week that was before the beef and butter fast that we did that one i thought that was your regular chili recipe it had keto chow instead of yeah no tomatoes stuff. no tomato paste or tomatoes or anything like that wow yeah. okay so but the it's batch good. that i that i had made this week when I was like taking the photographs and everything for the keto chow um, recipe challenge, that one only had ground beef in it. It didn't have pork like the first batch. Right. And usually I add like pork and ground beef and bacon and stuff like that. That one just had the ground beef in it. And it's actually an award winner, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, my chili tends to win the awards at the church chili cook-off. So. Yay! So, so other than that, it was like pretty light week right didn't get to exercise we kept saying like we're gonna exercise but it was like raining well, every single day i did ride my bike you rode your bike i did i didn't get to do the bands yet yeah we didn't do the bands we'll we're do gonna them. get him we're gonna i think we're gonna try to start them next week next week should be a little bit lighter week easier week <sighs> hashtag goals <laughs> anything else i think that's it okay we well, want to do comments please let's do comments I still cannot get over Miss Kim getting us shirts and stuff. That is so nice. Thank you. And 3,000 subscribers is still like blowing my mind. I thought you would have been like wearing your uh, Watch Autumn Keto Fanny Pack. I know. That was another thing. She's still probably doing that giveaway. Yeah. So, yeah. If you haven't seen, I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. We had... Uh, Autumn had sent us a box like to kind of celebrate her 25,000 25, subscribers. And so she's doing a giveaway. So when this launches, you still have a few days. Go check out that video and you can enter to win like a Watch Autumn Keto swag box. That's cool. Yeah. Like fanny pack and a blender bottle, a notepad, hat. a hat, things like that. So make sure you go check that out. But it was really cool that she sent us that box. I would love it if one of you guys won. 
That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Okay, so we have a couple of subscriber of the week, so we're only a couple of stories. Okay. So one of them was actually from Rachel. Rachel! Who uh, emailed, I believe this came in an email. I'll put her pictures up here. It's just one line. She said, one year difference photo. And uh, my sweet, handsome husband. So, Aww. what a difference. Oh, my goodness. Wow. She, like, dropped, like, 10 years off of her life. I'm Forget the pounds. I'm I don't know how many pounds you lost, Rachel, but you look like you went backwards 10 you years. You look gorgeous. Look at, that. look at this adorable couple. They're so cute. Okay, we need to match. <laughs> we need to match more. Look at how cute they are. We are matching. Are we sort of gray? I guess gray. With with maroon. Yeah, but look how cute with the stripes. It's adorable. I'm a fat guy. I don't look good in stripes. <laughs> Do you hear him talk? Are you ready? Yes. Lori Morin. Hi, Lori. And she wrote, I'll put her pictures up. My story is I'm 55 years young. I have two children. I tried everything to lose weight. I didn't stick with anything. I watched a few YouTube videos on keto and researched it in depth. I started slow at first, and then by the second week, I felt my clothes getting loose. Nice. I took pictures as YouTubers suggested. Good. I was 238 pounds, and now after three months, I'm down 30 pounds and three sizes. Wow. It's a great lifestyle that I can follow. Good. I really enjoy your recipes. This is a platform I enjoy very much because on my own, I was on my own until I found this group. Well, Miss Lori, you are no longer on your yes. own. We are so excited that you're here with us. And let me see her pictures. Oh my goodness. What a difference. Wow. Gorgeous. Yep. And again, now if you are new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group. I don't know. There's like almost 600 people in there. Yeah. Now. So I'll, there's a link down in the description. You can go join it. And uh, just people encouraging each other, putting up it's recipes, great. products they found, things like that. We're in there a lot. So, yeah, please go join it because it is really a family in there. Lori, you are so beautiful. Okay, so comments. First one, from Time to Shrink. What a cute name. That's an awesome name. Hi, Time to Shrink. Well, she wrote, uh, or he wrote, definitely review the Built Bars and test blood sugars. I have tested them, and for me, my blood sugar went up a good bit. Wow. I think they taste amazing, so I was super disappointed. Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. I did send them an email. I never got a response from them. I, they're not available in any of our local stores, and honestly... I don't want to buy a box of 12. I know they have this deal where you can get a sample pack and get like 5 or $10 off. We don't off. even know if we'll like one. I don't want to buy a box of 12 of them not knowing like how are they going to treat me? What is it going to do to me? So if I can get my hands on a bar or a couple bars. And I know some of them I think have a lot more carbs than others. I've seen some of them that are, people are saying they have seven, eight, nine net carbs and there's a couple. In one of them, bar. Yeah. And some of them have like three or four net carbs. So. You know, if we can find them, we will absolutely test them. We're on it. Uh, Shelly Parker. Hi, Shelly. Uh, I love your shirt, Rachel. I think you were wearing the Mario Brothers shirt. Oh, week, right? fun. Uh, that was my first video game that I ever mastered. Where do you get your t-shirts? Well, I got that one from Walmart, right. the kids department. Um, I, thrift stores? Thrift stores. And I also like, if you're looking for funny shirts, um, Target. Yeah. Usually has some great funny shirts that are reasonably priced. Usually they're like twelve ninety nine or under. Sometimes you can get once a year when there's like the the Black Friday deals at Hot Topic. Mm -hmm. We usually load up because you can get them ten dollars a shirt. But those places. Vivija. Hey Vivija. Uh, I think he said I'm saying it wrong. I don't know how I'm saying it wrong. He said Vivija. Isn't that not what I always say? That's how I'm saying it. Okay. Uh, so this was, what would you bring with you? Vi Vi J. Uh, he yeah. said three albums. I'd, ha I'd have to go with some long ones. Oh, yeah. Why not? So he wants to bring, uh, if he was on a desert island, Les Miserables, the complete symphonic recording. I think you would, too. I actually love, well, not that one. I just like the, the Broadway play. It's actually my favorite Broadway play. Second favorite one. My other one was Phantom of the Opera, which I saw like 15 times, including like three times with Michael Crawford. Wow. So. Um, Look at this guy. Queen's Greatest Hits. Okay, I would totally bring that, too. And the Beatles' Blue Album. Which was their best tracks from 1967 to 1970. Nice. We have good taste in music we there. We could get stuck on an island together there. Absolutely. Uh, Sadie Eddie wrote, The Hi, three Sadie. things that I would take with me to a desert island are a crate of books, Smart. fruit, and vegetable seeds. 
and an unlimited supply of clean water. You are like brilliant, brilliant, but just like way too practical for me. No, like, I love it. We're gonna live, Sadie. We're gonna live on this. Island. I'd be like, I'm bringing my iPhone, completely like negating the fact that I won't have a way to charge my iPhone. But you'd have to have it. I want to bring like a, a like the Swiss Family Robinson, and then we're set. Right? There's a challenge. How about one week of absolutely like no iPhones, no computers, no nothing. How would we upload a YouTube video? Well, you have to go no no videos. <laughs> That's smart. That's just called okay, a vacation. Okay, well we can use our computer to upload videos, but you can't open your iPhone, no social media or anything like that. I'm I, I might think, die. I, <laughs> Is it? Are you willing to risk it? Okay, so Anna wrote. Hi, Anna. A disheveled car, oh, this is about people breaking in a tour car. Yes. A disheveled car is better than broken windows and a disheveled car. Very true. Trust me, but I would also would never leave a computer in my car. Yeah, I don't leave my computer in the car. I've accidentally done it, but it is something that, like, I'm pretty on top of. Yeah. This It was funny. Like, all this week, Caleb just slyly would check both doors when he would, like, get out of the vehicle to see if we'd learned our lesson. And we had, and he actually said, like, Good job, guys. I'm proud of you. <laughs> uh, Kathy Houston wrote, good Hi, morning to my two favorite ketos. Sorry about your car. Glad they caught the jerk. <laughs> good to see your channels growing. I'm so happy for you, too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy. And thank you, guys. Again, like, we are blown away at 3,000 subscribers. Yeah. I can remember getting super excited when we had 300. I, was, I remember I said we got 100 because it meant we were able to go, like, YouTube.com slash 2 crazy ketos. Yeah. <laughs> like not a bunch of letters and stuff like that. It doesn't like get less exciting. No, it gets it more exciting every day. I like jump out of bed and I'm like excited about this family. Yep. Let's see. Ricky Roberts wrote, Hi, Ricky. I never lock my car because I would rather be able to open the car rather than break the window. I've had the window broken on cars in the past from people breaking into them. I never leave anything in there. So um, it's a good point. Okay. So one time... My uncle had his truck bro broken into um, at church, at a, at a church down in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And, okay, this is funny. This thing was like the Green Hornet. It was the oldest, like, Ford pickup truck, work truck ever. In fact, it had a floor, it had a hole in the floorboard. And when my aunt would drive around with them, she actually lost a shoe once coming to, like, a family gathering because they went in that car. It started to sound like the window cost more than the truck. Every single window in the truck was broken with the exception of the windshield. And when they broke into that vehicle, they, they broke the last remaining intact window. And he was like, why? There were like four other windows you could have reached in through to like break into my truck. Why'd you have to break the one window that was still not broken? Wow. Crazy. Sue Tracy wrote. Hey, Sue. I had the same thing happen in my car last week. Oh. Just made a mess, but they didn't want any of it. Well, Sue, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I'm glad that they nobody got anything. Yeah. You know, the first thing I was actually really relieved to see was like the insurance information and all that because it's got some of your personal information. You know what I was worried about? I was worried about the lock for the the wheels because you have that lock on your wheels so that you know, like where you have to have the little special thing and we keep the key in the glove compartment so that you don't lose it right. when you go to change your tire. Yeah. That's what I was like happy they didn't take that. All of that. Um, Sharon wrote think hey, of it Sharon? this way about getting your car broken into they didn't uh, break a window to get into it exactly I'm, I'm going to read all of these comments to Caleb and say see this is why you don't lock your car at night <laughs> <laughs> um, Ann N wrote Hi, Ann. I love the encouragement and inspiration from you too I'm so sorry to hear about your car getting and broken into talk about feeling violated I must share a comment from you two about my almost 15-year-old uh, grandson. While our grandchildren, 16 and almost 15, were with us for seven weeks, we made sure that uh, they were at least in the background when we watched you Aww. guys. He had he said, they seem really nice. Oh, that's really nice. Well, thank you, Miss Ann. I appreciate that. Thanks for letting us like share that time with your grandkids. Yes. That's like such a precious time. I know my mom absolutely loves like being around these older grandchildren. I mean, you're growing up with them all over again. I mean, you know, when she has had Caleb and the other kids when they were like preschoolers, it was like you were going through the motherhood again, but like 
you were, she said she, you were much calmer. Right. Like you weren't as frazzled as you were when you were like the mom with preschoolers. And I don't know. I think she's enjoying these teenagers and young adult men even more than I am. Hey, what I want to know is like, I know the way my mom is with the grandkids and like, Hey, you want ice cream? Hey, you want these snacks? Where was she when I was growing up? They were like your ball of nerves. Right. What happens? Something must happen. I guess when we become grandparents, we're going to like treat like our grandchildren very differently than we treat our kids and our kids are going to come to us like, that's not the parent I got. Who is this Joanne? <laughs> Who is this Rachel? I know. Okay. So next one. Constance wrote. Hey, Constance. I have it. Oh, so this is, these few are about the people who like to make comments like saying like, oh, you can just have one of these. Oh, yeah. So she's like, I have it happen to me so often that people offer me non-keto foods. I look at it like if I can keto fight, if I can keto fight it, why should I eat it heavily carved up? It's a good point. Right. I mean, it's, but it is interesting, like, why everybody's like, no, 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 just have the just good have stuff. One. And it's like, but I don't think that's the good stuff anymore. Yep. Carol Ward wrote, Hey, Carol. If you're eating what they want, it makes them feel justified in what they eat. That's true. Like, now we're both guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, Ubriel wrote, Hey, Ubriel. My husband goes through the peer pressure more than I do. For instance, the guys were heading to Wendy's for lunch and DH declined and they asked if he had to ask his wife's permission. Oh, no, they didn't. I've actually had that a lot, especially like after games and stuff. Like the guys will all go out and I'll be like, yeah, I'm not interested. Usually it's like going out for pizza or something like that. And they'll be like, what well, do you have to ask your wife's permission? What are we in middle school? I mean, honestly, I just want to get home to Rachel. <laughs> Thank you. So he said he, she said he handled it great. He said, no, I don't have to ask. My wife will tell me if I can go to Wendy's. <laughs> nice. Why do you think there's more pressure for guys? Is it because women are already on some sort of diet? You know, it's just a guy thing. Like, you know, oh, you have to ask the ball and chain kind of thing. Like, you should be your own man and do what you want. And... What if you, you know, you're the one that started on keto before me. Right. So what, but then it wasn't me that was making you do something. Even when I started, I mean, I had a lot of people telling me like the second you get off the of carbs, the second you go back to carbs and get off the of keto, like, you know, you're going to gain it all back. Like you might as well just eat it now. Like this is silly. You're like really no. trying to discourage. So I'm sorry. It's just guys. a guy thing. Sorry. So bright girl wrote, Hey bright girl. I'd like you to talk more about why you avoid Carmel coloring. We avoid it because it can often make ADHD symptoms worse. Wow. Um, for several reasons. First of all, I mean, there have been a lot of studies that link it to cancer. It can cause like different problems with your colon and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's another chemical. Yeah. I mean, anymore, we sort of scrutinize every chemical. Like, yeah. why are you here? Why do we need you? It's the same reason why we try to avoid a lot of preservatives. Because my thing is, if you're just here as a chemical to make something shelf stable right. and you're not adding to flavor and you're not adding to nutrients in my body, like what is that doing in my body right. that's a preservative? Am right. I getting rid of it all or is some of it becoming a part of me and maybe doing some injury? So we scrutinize pretty much every ingredient. Yeah. I mean, even with preservatives, I don't mind preservatives. We just try to stay away from like, you know, the artificial preservatives. Yeah. I don't mind natural preservatives, things like even like citric acid and stuff. I don't bother. I'm just not entirely sure that they don't do something to me. Yep. Uh, David Dieter wrote, Hey David, do you have a Plato's closet near you? I just found them two weeks ago. You have to watch some things because they're pricey. I found a North Face fuzzy jacket for $12. Nice. It was green and purple, which are my favorite colors. I found Uggs for $40. They have tons of men's stuff, too. I'm praying for you guys. We actually do have a Plato's closet. I've got to go house. back there. I've never been there because I've always heard that it was expensive. I've gone there a couple times, and, and it wasn't as cheap as thrift store stuff but at the time that i went um i was a size 22 24 so there were there weren't a lot of options for me there anyway i don't think it was just the price i think it was a case of the section i would be shopping from was very limited so right. i need to go back yeah, there we should go back we should make a trip over i know exactly where they're at thank you for reminding absolutely. me absolutely uh kim wrote hey, i'm not kim. gonna even attempt the print to pronounce the last name I, I, McLearn. I'm not, McLearn. so i wrote I love watching your videos. You share so much great information and you are really positive about everyone's journey. I also like the fact that you give the links to others who have YouTube videos to share their info. I'm so glad I found you through Ask Nurse Cindy. Um, 
we absolutely love Ask Nurse Cindy. She's on our prayer list this week, both her and her sister. I yep. know that Ask Nurse Cindy actually had some shoulder surgery recently, yep. and her sister is dealing with some uh, mouth cancer. Yeah. So keep her in your prayers and so send her some you know, positive vibes. But I am so glad that you found us through Ask Nurse Cindy. And yeah, we love this whole keto community. Right. And there we we learn so much and i'm like why keep that information to ourselves right like if right. somebody else has something cool going on or they have a recipe or something i want to pass it on right it's like a good deal right that's what i love about the keto community we learned that really at KetoCon, how like especially like all of the different people on social media like youtube instagram so that everyone's just super nice and like wants to build everybody else up and that's my thing i mean if there's information on keto connects website or autumn's website or aaron's website or you know anything like that and if it's something that i don't have or something that i find interesting why wouldn't i share it because again our goal is to like get as many people on keto and getting them healthy as possible yeah so. we want you to get to your health goals as quickly as possible and if there's a youtuber that you guys enjoy watching that maybe you've never heard us give a shout out to yeah. Write down in the comments below. We need below. to do a video of like who our favorite like YouTubers and yeah. stuff are. Yeah, because if we're not mentioning them, chances are we just haven't seen them yet. Right. So share them with us so that we can watch them too. Yeah. I I can never know if this is Janice or Janice. So, it's Janice. Is it Janice? She said, how do you feel about the Carb Manager app? I log into that every day. It has recipes from Keto Connect and other good recipes. Carb Manager is actually a great app. That's the one that I started with, with Carb Manager. And it was the free version. Yeah. Um, the only reason that I really switched over to uh, using Chronometer is because I like the amount of detail, first of all, that Chronometer gives you. It's where a lot of detail. It, it really can break down. Like, if you want to see, like, am I missing any electrolytes for the day? If you want to see, like, where is my omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, it's in Chronometer. I mean, you can go down Chronometer and see every single vitamin that you took in for the day, every single nutrient. And, be, and, and it's really cool if you've been taking all of your electrolytes and see, like, this is where I'm lacking or this is, like, Wow, I've got everything in there. So that's what I really like about it. And I also like with Chronometer, the fact that like all of the different food products that are in there, it's all verified. So that's yeah. why I started using Chronometer. I was sad to get rid of my fitness pal just because, yeah, you you could use like different people's suggestions and it would be like much less, like they would have, you know, one kind of, uh, one person would put in cream cheese and it would have zero carbs. One person would put in cream cheese and it would have two carbs. So of course, I'm always going with the person who would say zero, but really I was just fooling myself. And I noticed that with Carb Manager too, where there's just a lot of items that I was finding the labels wrong. But overall, I think it's a good app. If you're not gonna use Pronometer and you are tracking, I definitely would recommend um, Carb Manager. The one thing that's nice about Carb Manager is Carb Manager will figure out your macros for you if you put in your height and weight and everything I like, like that. that. Um, chronometer is a little bit more in depth. Like you can, you can kind of go tell it your exact macros you want. You can just say, I want to follow the ketogenic diet. So it's, it's just a little bit more detailed, but either one is really good. You're tracking. Yeah. Great job. Like, Absolutely. Whew, two weeks into this tracking myself and I have new appreciation for people tracking. Doll, I wrote. Hey doll. Would you consider showing Rachel figuring her macros the full process? Uh, this is a very tricky thing and could benefit tons of newbies and those of us who have gotten lazy. Okay, so first of all, I sit in a corner and cry <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Then I throw a tantrum and then I get up and start I'm actually the one who figured it. out Rachel's actual macros of what she's supposed to follow. All she's doing is doing the tracking, which Just I think is hard enough. The food. Right. Um, I definitely think we, that is definitely something we should do is like I'll put together a video of maybe... I'll break down both chronometer and card manager, like how to use both of them, figure out your macros, things like that, and how to input things and stuff like that. I like that, it. That's definitely something we can work Let's on. Let's do that. Uh, Chloe Susan wrote, yes, hey, please do that. She was a response to the doll. I really need help. I added card manager, the free version. I was in tears by 3.30. See? I have no Crying. clue what to tell it. I'm 64 and I don't have any tech skills. So, I, I'm. Yeah, we will definitely work I'm 42, on that. 42, almost 43 with no tech skills. Cindy Trunk wrote, Hey, Cindy. If Rachel cooks her own food, she won't have to eat awful. Yes, she will. Wait, what? No, uh huh. 
because I'm still doing some of your cooking. We said that you were doing two of the meals and I'm doing one of the meals. Okay, that just added to me doing all of the meals. No, because we're still doing like ground beef with liver ground in and heart ground in and stuff like that. You know what you could do? Oh man, I'm, I'm helping you out here. I'm, I'm ordering some liver wish too. Ew. It's good for you. Uh, ew. It's good for you. <laughs> but um, it's just mix it together in the ground beef form so I don't see it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's why I bought a new meat grinder. And I'm going to cook it up myself. Oh, man, I'm hurting myself. Stop talking. Stop talking, Rachel. Uh, Stacy Gooding wrote. Hey, Stacy. If Rachel, by the way, doesn't want to eat, like, the liver and stuff like that, she also can't have any of, like, the good desserts that I keep, like, screening recipes for. Do you see this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's a thinly veiled threat. That I'm not going to get a dessert if I don't eat something awful that's literally called awful. <laughs> I love you. You know you always get the desserts. I know. Uh, Stacy Gooding wrote, Hey, Stacey. I love your ideas for varied video types each week. Thank you for all the great info. So, yep, we're working on trying to come up with a schedule right now. We're just trying to make sure we have a lot of different things. We've been working on recipe. We've been kind of recipe heavy this week. Yeah. But we've been Not preparing. that we released, but stuff that's coming out. But we've been, yeah, preparing for the competition. Yeah. I put on my, I put on my, my sweatbands and I started jogging, you know, like. What did you do with the recipes? I, I nothing. <laughs> I just like to get prepared for competition in general. But then I'm on the sideline of the kitchen going like, go, Joe, go, Joe. That's my contribution. So last one. Cheryl0756. Hey, Cheryl. Wrote, I really enjoyed this video. I'm thankful nothing worse happened to your vehicle, Rachel. Thanks, Cheryl. She said, may I piggyback on the comments you shared from Vivijay as well as the comments that you all shared. Sure. Lots of people have suggested eating croutons in my salad or having a breadstick or having a burger or fries and a burrito or a slice of cake or a cookie or chips once in a while because it won't hurt me. I would love nothing more than to eat a big bowl of pasta or rice or mashed potatoes or have a hot dinner roll with butter. I absolutely agree with you that suggestions of having a carb-laden food is akin to offering drugs to a recovering junkie or alcohol to a recovering alcoholic. It's true. They mean well, but don't consider the fact that some of us folks use food as our drug of choice and the temptation to give in might be too great to not just stop at one. Yeah. I promised myself that once I lost all this weight I wanted to lose, I was never, ever going back down that path again. Ever. Mm -hmm. The mantra I repeat daily to myself and to everyone else who suggests having this or that food just once won't hurt me is, I love carbs. However, carbs don't love me. That is awesome. Cheryl, I am right there with you. Yep. It's sort of like exactly what you said. It's a promise that I made to myself. And that's kind of where I have to say to the people that offer carbs, you know, like, I'm sorry, but I made a promise to myself and I just absolutely can't break that promise to myself right because it's a deal we made me and me and me yeah i mean and i was just talking to someone who were like you know you need to not be like so fanatical about like keeping your weight at a certain thing like no don't worry about it i'm like it's the same thing like i promised myself i was never gonna go back up and wait so i am a little bit fanatical about making sure now i'm not down to where i've got to say the same exact weight to me if i'm fluctuating within five pounds of where i feel comfortable so long as my pants aren't getting tighter and my shorts not getting you know too tight and stuff like that i'm fine but i'm always going to be like i want to stay here and yeah i'm not willing to put 10 15 20 pounds back on there's a little bit of the little the little girl in me that says mind your own beeswax right. other people but um i'm not gonna say that that's just what's what I'm thinking. But um, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know why they need to police my enjoyment. You know what you can do? How about give me a $10 bill? <laughs> how about I could always use more $10 bills? Right. Or how about buy me a gift card to Starbucks? How about you let me choose how I would like to reward myself? Right. Ask me what you would like to offer me. I'll tell you something. I like that lipstick you're wearing. Go buy me a, a <laughs> stick of that lipstick. You know, I mean, right? We would look crazy if we responded to them like that. But let me choose my reward. Right. Let me choose like the attaboy for adulting all week. People, like she said, people just don't realize that like for those of us who have been overweight for most of our life, who, who do have 
a problem with food, whether it's eating food because like you're stressed or eating it because you're depressed or, you know, or whatever it may be, having things trigger you, they don't realize because it's not something that they're necessarily suffering with, like what it can do to you. Like you were just talking, we were talking, you know, the other day and you're talking about like how even eating a keto friendly thing, like a sweetened product, like with Stevie or something like that, can trigger you to just want more and more and more and you can't stop at one. Yeah, I mean, I've had days where I've gone off the wagon as far as exceeded my calorie goals, Mm -hmm. but that's kind of like, I have made it so that I, no matter what, I'm not eating potato chips. I'm not going back to the carb food. I'm not eating a baked potato. I'm not eating rice. I'm just like, I just decided that that is like a line I won't cross. I mean, do I have days where I exceed my calorie limits and probably my carbs because of the fact that even if you're eating you know, net carbs, you can go over what your plan was. But I don't think you're never, with the exception of like when you would eat like a half a pack of gum in the day, you probably were never going even over like a net carb kind of thing. But the only reason why that is this case is because I have drawn that line and said, I'm not going back to these particular food. So no, I'm never eating a a breadstick because I told myself I wouldn't eat bread. Right. You know, that was it. Which is one of the reasons that we do like our dessert Fridays because we just found that if we're allowing ourselves to dessert every single day, it's too easy to have more than one cookie. And then like one cookie becomes two and two becomes three, especially if you're doing it throughout the day. But if we limit ourselves to you can only have that on Friday. And you know what? If if you go up to 25 carbs on Friday, you're fine. If you at eat an extra 300 calories, you're fine because it's one day and it's still sticking to keto foods. I think we have a good opportunity to help all the people in our life kind of change that whole reward-based system into like experiences. Yep. So you want, you know, we maybe we don't eat the same things as everybody in our life, but you know what? We could all enjoy a movie together. We could all enjoy a shopping trip. We could all enjoy going to one of those like paint a ceramic cup or whatever experiences. Let's go have an experience that is shared. No matter what my diet is and your diet is, we can go and have a fun time. Let's go walk the boardwalk at the park. That has not changed. I as a person have not changed. It's just the fuel that I'm fueling my body with has changed. And maybe you don't agree with it, but it's no different than you wanting to put like super unleaded in your car and I'm just putting in regular. Right. But really, keto is the super unleaded. (laughs) Well, that is uh, Keto on the Couch for this week. I can't believe this is the 22nd Keto on the Couch. What a blessing. So if you guys have any questions or comments, do us a favor, leave them down below. We will answer them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Yay! Yep. And uh, if you like what you saw today, do us a favor, hit the like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.